morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening, wherever you are in the world. We are going to spend the next hour just exploring stuff. I got a bunch of stuff that I wanted to show you with respect to, um, it's just spring, but it's spring and spring native, which is the important bit, right? So uh, let's go through that. I just have, a, like, let's, let's write it all down, right? While we're, while we're at it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So to do. Uh, mm, mm, mm. And native. Okay. Um, exposed ORM and native Spring Boot OAuth resource and native Spring oop, Boot Octa OAuth starter and native. Now who knows we're gonna be, whether we're gonna be able to get through all this. I'm uh, already dubious, but you know, could do, right? Spring Boot. Okay. Oh, and native. <sighs> Is there anything else I'm missing there? What else? All right, I think that's it. That's my that's my tentative to do today for the next hour or so. And we'll just start in any old place. Cause I just think there's just so many things that are just now fully sort of ready to work with native, which I think is interesting, right? More and more projects are becoming native aware. So let's start with spring integration. Okay. Um, integration, native integration, Lambach. Um, sure, hit go. And <laughs> integration that zip. All right. <laughs> okay. So again, spring integration, I think we've even done a, uh, an episode of code on this before, so I don't want to spend too very long. Actually, you know what? Before I proceed, it occurs to me my resolution is not great. So how do I? I'm not even sure if I'm sharing. Exit minimal window. Okay. Displays. Lower resolution, then go back and share screen. There we go. Now we're cooking. Good. All right. So, public static void main. Uh, I, all, I'm, I'm not sure if I was sharing the screen for the last little bit there, but all I did is I went to the Spring Initializer, generated a project with the Spring Integration, Spring Native, and Lombok. Uh, and for quick view, here's what we're going to cover hopefully today in the next very ambitious hour. Uh, and all I'm trying to do is just to show you all this cool stuff that now just sort of works out of the box with native, right? So integration flow, return. And I'll, you know, this the stuff I'm showing you in Spring Integration actually comes from Spring Integration 5.5. Uh, 5. So Spring Integration 5.5 5 has um, a bunch of new features, including actually support for a zip file reader, which is kind of interesting. Actually, maybe we can demonstrate that at the same time. How about that? So we'll do Spring Integration zip two, and we need spring integration file, okay? And so that, that's the basic, uh, you know, that's basically the, the arrangement. That's what I'm gonna have in this, uh, in this application. Let's see here. <laughs> okay, so basic flow that looks right. Maven reimport. Integration flow. And what we want to do is we want to read files of type zip. So we'll do files inbound adapter equals files.inbound adapter. We're going to read the data from a directory. And I'll just have that directory injected here as a resource. So desktop in, right? No, in. And it's going to be a file class path entry. So we'll say file in. And then we'll do file out. 
Okay. Auto create directory is true. All righty, good stuff. So there's the inbound file adapter. We're gonna say files inbound adapter. And we're just gonna handle the data just to prove that we can. So new generic handler of type file and just print out the results. So system out um, new file, right? So this is, I suspect you've probably seen me do this demo. I love this demo because it's just, you don't need any really other, any other infrastructure except for, uh, of course, a file system, which, you know, I can take for granted in the big three operating systems today when you're developing software that you probably have access to a file system, okay? Um, okay, so basic flow, yeah? Just super, super basic. Let's just see if that works. Let's run that and make sure everything's kind of sane. Um, and then actually, before we do that, handle, one more thing. I'm gonna do a files.outbound adapter. So files outbound adapter equals files.outbound adapter out. Auto create directory is true. Good. So here is this. And oh, because we're reading from an inbound ad adapter, because we're reading data from a, a, a thing that can provide, you know, it's, it provides the data in intervals, it has a polar. We need to configure that polar. So I'll do that as such. So palm dot fixed rate 1000, goody, okay. Okay, so that's how we're gonna read data. Um, and I'm just gonna print it out. Let's just make sure that works, make sure we have something insane. Uh, here's my desktop before we kick, kick that off. There's my desktop, right? To do in Spring Cloud Square. So run. Okay, so it's up and running. Uh, there's the in directory. Okay, so if I just go here in the command line, desktop in, touch, hello, there you go, there's that. And Spring Integration sees that there's a new file. Now, <clears throat> there's a new inbound adapt, there's a new um, zip transformer, which I think is kind of neat, right? So what does that do? We say in, then we say transform, new unzip, transformer and that's it and that'll unzip the files and then we want to split it so we say new zip split or unzip hmm. is it new zip something it's a new zip something maybe i don't need that let's just see what this does because i don't i'm i'm still a little unfamiliar with all of it but let's try that so now i'm going to go to my desktop here test. Okay, and we'll put this file test in here. So I've got a directory. I'm going to um, actually, you know what, I'll just compress both of these. So we'll say compress. That gives me a new zip. I'm going to put that new zip in the inbound directory. Okay, what does that do? doesn't do much. Okay, that's not great. So what does the unzip transformer do? Expect a single result. Do zip transform. Okay, unzip stuff. Let's see. And then we're missing something. We want uh, an unzip split, unzip result splitter. That's what we want. Okay, so we say split. Oh, you know what the other thing I'm doing wrong? I'm, I'm, these are supposed to be spring beans. I have to, yeah, these have life cycle methods that I need, need to honor. If it actually sort of incidentally worked, that was an accident, right? Okay. All right. Ready. Okay, there's this. And then we want the unzip split, unzip result splitter. All righty, new unzip split result. Okay, so those are two beans. These are the two things we want to inject. So here's the splitter. We can inject this here. Voila. And we want the unzip transformer. We inject that here. All righty, good. So there's the unzip transformer split unzip result splitter. Good stuff. Run that one more time. And this time I'm gonna return the file. I'll just keep the chain going. So it'll actually send it to the output directory as well. 
split that. And that is zip file, no kidding. Okay, so in compress, I'm gonna compress this file. What? No, that's compress. There you go. Put that in the, I'm gonna clear this. Inbound. All right, look at that. So it actually unzips all of this data. We, we can see it reflected here and then it moves it out to hopefully the outbound directory, which it doesn't seem to have done. So file outbound adapter handle. Oh, they're both in. How come that didn't create a, a loop? Okay, good. One more time, this time with a more gusto. Okay. So there's the output directory, ta-da. So we were able to put a zip file in the inbound directory and then it created an output directory. So one more time, this time for all the marbles, let's stop it. Okay. I'll compress this thing here. I got my two directories, they're both empty now. I'm gonna put this in the in inbound directory and go to the output directory and there's that. Okay, basic Spring Negation. That's a new feature in Spring Negation 5.5. Fine, right? All very good. Now I'm going to turn this into a native image. The only thing I needed to do to make this work before is to add a type hint for generic message. And I've since sent a re pull request so that this itself is already, you know, taken care of as well. Um, hopefully it's not required anymore, right? This is the org messaging support generic message type. Okay. So with that done, I'm going to compile it. I'm just going to turn this into a native image. So, uh, Maven minus P. By the way, did you know, I'm not sure if this is true last time we all spoke, but now when you start a new project at the initializer, start.spring.io and you explore, you can see that we have a generated profile for you as well as, um, as, well as the build pack support, right? So profile, yeah, native, the GraalVM build tools, native Maven plugin. So I'm gonna do minus P native uh, minus D skip test because, you know, hashtag YOLO clean package. And that's going to take a few minutes and we'll let it do its thing in the background. And we'll eventually have an application that processes data and unzips stuff with the plume. And remember, Spring Batch already works, right? Spring Batch already works with native. So the fact that Spring Integration now works, mm, wonderful, right? What this means is you can take your application, uh, compile it into a native image and, and your, your integration application can look at a directory or, you know, Kafka or XMPP or whatever. It can do whatever the Spring Integration things it does are. And then uh, you know, if there's something that requires lots of sequential data access, uh, it can forward that uh, charge to full now. It can forward that um, that work onto a Spring Batch job, right? So why is it not charging? I wonder. Um, anyway, so that's good, right? Uh, you can you can actually process data. I mean, you can you can you know kick off a batch job within your within your native application. Using Spring Spring Innovation to re, to mine the events and then based on those events kick off a batch job. So that's a really interesting thing. We're talking about like applications that start up in milliseconds here, right? And look at that. This is almost done. Spring Innovation is quite small after all. That might be why it's not charging. We're using all the juice. Oh, Docker's using all the juice. Do I even need Docker at the moment? Probably don't, right? What am I doing with Docker? Go away. Give me back my 20 gigs of RAM, please. Okay. Ah, see, that made the difference. It's charging. And there's our application. So if we go to target integration, yay. How cool is that? Uh, <laughs> that's the coolest. So um, what did that do? That's 47 milliseconds. The, the first time. For some reason, I don't understand. It took 200 milliseconds, but it doesn't normally. It's, yeah, there it is, 47 milliseconds, right? Over and over, all day long, just to, to start up your application and do something interesting. Um, and you can do other things, obviously. But so that's that's one example of things that just works nicely with uh, native now. Okay, good stuff. Happy we talked about that. Moving on. Um, the other thing, Spring Cloud Square, this is new, right? So Olga, our friend Olga, introducing Spring Cloud Square. 
she um, she talked about this is a project. Spring called Square is a project that open that uses some of the open source bits from Square, you know, the payment uh, company. Um, to uh, like they have Square Cash and they have those little kiosks you see at stores all the time. They, they have a bunch of really cool open source stuff. And so uh, Spring Cloud lead Spencer Gibb wrote the first cut of Spring Cloud Square years ago. This has been in like an incubator state for at least three years, right? It's been around forever and a day. Uh, and it has two very interesting bits that I've always wanted, you know, sort of reified or made real in the, in the Spring ecosystem. Uh, one of which is the uh, uh, support for OKHTTP, OK which is an alternative HTTP client, yay. Uh, and also retrofit. Retrofit. Uh, this is a the kind of like Fane or my my own little pet project, my little hobby hobby project, uh, Spring Retro Socket. Uh, this gives you the ability to create a declarative client for a REST service, whereas my little thing does it for our socket. But you know, and, and so in that respect, it's fairly similar to um, Open Fane from Netflix, which originally started in, at Netflix. But the difference is, it supports asynchronous results, right? So you can actually ask it for data and then get the data back as a callback. You can actually, and here they're using a retrofit call type, which is great if you're doing Android, but you can also use this, this type. Uh, you can use a completable future. You can use a reactor, uh, a flux or mono. I mean, you can do all sorts of cool things instead of just a call. So, um, you know, that's cool. Okay, so now we've got Spring Retro, uh, Spring, Spring Cloud Square. The problem is of course that, um, this doesn't quite work. Uh, four four O M one doesn't quite work out of the box. However, your boy has been busy. So Spring Cloud Incubator, mm -hmm. Spring Cloud Square. There, see pull request five hours ago. There we go. That's how that's how this is gonna work. So what I'm gonna do <laughs> is get clone that uh, desktop. Get clone. Mm -hmm. Oops, I already got that. I don't think I need mine anymore. I can just use, oh, famous last words. Is it gonna be okay? It's gonna, oh, it's gonna be okay. Let's do this, git clone, hi -oh. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna just do Maven, skip tests, clean install. So this gives me a Spring Cloud Square that is amenable to being made native. Uh, let's just install it, okay. I need the snapshots here. But it doesn't quite get us there, okay? There's still some work to get get Spring Cloud Square working. And normally that work would take the place of hints in the Spring Native project, and it will. <laughs> but but for now, since I've just been prototyping, um, I haven't quite yet submitted the pull. I have to like write the, I have to write the hints. I got it working on a sample app. So we're gonna use that sample app and uh, you know, it'll be fine. It's okay, right? Um, so, okay, there's our, our snapshot, 040 snapshot, right? So uh, we're gonna use that. And then we're gonna use start.spring.io. Uh, you know what, actually, just to make life a little bit easier, I'm gonna cheat here a little bit. Here's my example, go back. Spring Cloud Square, two days ago, clone. Get clone, sample, square sample, okay? Square, sample. All right, good, so. Um, let's see, CD service. Uh, we wanna do, I'm just gonna run this, right? I don't care about, this is just a regular REST API. There's nothing in, in, in that already works with native. You, that just, it just works, right? So I won't bother with that. Look at the code though, if you want. Okay. There, right? That's the entire application. It's a REST controller that when it starts up, it listens for the web server initialized event so that it can get a pointer to the, or a reference or a value of the, the current assigned web server port. It stashes that in a variable. And then when somebody comes along and says, hello, forward slash something wildcard, uh, we return a JSON structure with, two, with one attribute called greeting and the string that gets returned is hello name from port, okay? From this port. Um, and that's it. That's the entire uh, web application. Nothing entirely interesting about that. Okay, so, whoa. Oh, it's trying to connect to a discovery server. Uh, that's true. We need Eureka in this case, maybe Spring Boot Run. I forgot. We don't need, we're not going to use Eureka in this case, but I do have it here. 
Uh, all this does is it connects to the discovery server if it's there. And uh, when it's not there, it gets upset. But you can see that since the server started up, it's now registered itself, right? So if we go to localhost 8761, there's our service registry, greeting service. In theory, somebody could do load balanced calls to that. Um, I haven't tried that with native, so I'm not going to right now. That's on my to-do list literally after we hang up, you and me and all of us together. But let's take a look at this square sample app thing. I'm going to update it to point to the latest and greatest snapshots. Hopefully that already works. OK, so uh, Spring Native, great. Spring Cloud Discovery Client. Uh, no, we don't actually use git branch minus a. Git checkout this. OK, there you go. So it's 040 snapshots. And you know I'm bringing in the explicitly managed versions because these are not managed by the Spring Cloud Bill of Materials. They have to be explicitly managed. So I have the specific version here, Spring Cloud Square version uh, for retrofit and for OK HTTP. And then there's the, uh, the usual sort of uh, pro forma stuff for Spring Native and uh, the Bill of Materials and the Maven plugins and all that good stuff. Okay, so. Uh, it's definitely not what I wanted. Whoa. Sometimes you end up so far in the weeds. Okay, so let's just keep it simple here. Uh, as simple as possible, I guess, right? It's still, this will get a thousand times better in the next few days, right? Th that's the whole point. I'm just, so I, at first when I was specking out the native stuff, I was like, okay, can I get it to work with just regular retrofit, right? So like, indeed I could, right? This is just a regular retrofit kind of thing. I have to configure all the bits myself, but it worked. That's not what your use case should be though. So ignore that. Instead, this is a simple example using the factory bean that Spring Cloud builds. So we don't need that, but that's gonna get, that's too low level. What I want is the full like Spring Retrofit experience, Spring Cloud Square Retrofit experience. So I'll get rid of those lines there. Okay, so that's the actual application, right? And in order to make all this work, I had to add, oh, so much stuff. This is, this by the way, seems like a, a regression in Gravium itself, right? I don't know why I needed to add this reflect config for Oracle, blah, 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 right? I, I think it's a regression in the current version of Gravium. And I just saw that there's another version of Gravium. So maybe I'll update that tomorrow and see what happens. But um, okay, so I've got this. I had to add this in reflect config. That's, it. that's the weird bit of it. I can't add it through my normal spring native type hints. I just, I tried, you can see I tried here. It just didn't, doesn't register. Everything else does the right thing. It works just fine. But these, there's something going on where it, it just doesn't work. So the spring native hints that I build will have their own meta inf JSON as well as all these type hints. And uh, you won't need to register these type hints or these resource hints or these native hints, you know, enabling add all car sets, enabling these uh, URL protocols, because that'll all be done for you automatically with the spring native stuff if and when I get to submit a pull request. I'm gonna submit a pull request, who knows if it'll get accepted, but basically once that's in, then all of that will just go away and that'll be your resulting application, right? Uh, the application will be an interface and a runner that injects that reified, you know, proxied interface that then writes the result. It's a gc.hello, it gets a call from the hello service, executes it and gets the body, okay? Um, so this is what you should have to do. This is, and this works by the way. Let's, actually, we can just try this on the JVM before I reintroduce the native stuff. Did I say it worked? I mean, I was just clearly delirious. What did I do? Oh, um, here. This is, is this the registry? Where's the uh, service? This is the service, I think, right? So what I'm gonna do, okay, that's the service. I'll say server underscore port equals 8080. No, okay. Oh, nope, okay, we got this, we, we can do this. Had a stray A, what the A? Okay, good. Take three, just JVM stuff. 
No native stuff here yet at the moment. Disable this alert. Thank you. Okay, so there you go. So that worked clearly. Got the result. Hello, Spring fans from localhost, whatever. Okay, so all I want is for that to work in the native world. So I'm going to bring all that back in and uh, restore this to its glory. And then we're going to build it. So we'll say uh, maven minus p native clean package. And we'll just stand back and hope this works. And hopefully that it's pulling the uh, Spring uh, Cloud Square bits that are in math, you know, like main or master or whatever, uh, and trunk, there you go, trunk, that's the right way to say it. Um, okay. Oh, my license is about to expire, is it? Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> you know what the worst part is? My vacation starts on the 14th, so this is actually gonna be a problem for one day. Oh, gotta figure it out. Can't go on vacation and not have a valid license, it's ridiculous. <sighs> perturb me. Well, this is the fun stuff. This is why we get paid the big bucks to sit here and watch compilers do things. Speaking of which, my, uh, my friend Holden Corral tweeted earlier that she managed to get the Scala compiler to Stack Overflow, which is interesting. I, I didn't get a chance to deep dive into what she did exactly, but I just think that's a really cool, like, you know, I was just drinking coffee and she's like, oh yeah, I just got the <laughs> compiler to Stack Overflow. Uh, <laughs> I wonder what she did. That's a very robust compiler. So if, 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 if you can get it to Stack Overflow, it must've been gnarly. Okay, almost there, fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I'll, while that's doing its thing, I'm gonna figure out about my license. You know, I just, I would just love to know. Okay. I wonder what, I hope the weather's nice where you all are. I've got friends in the Pacific Northwest that are on fire, basically. Um, oh, you kidding? Did I forget to, did I forget to? Okay, well, son of a gun. Oh, that's so tedious. I forgot to skip tests. So that's a great new feature uh, uh, in, in the Spring Native world, which is that it, we can run your tests in the native context. But in this case, what that means is it had to compile everything as native code, run the tests, and only then did it start compiling the production code again for the production build, right? As opposed to the test build, uh, which ran the tests. So now it's recompiling. So we have to do all of that again. Oh, see, this is why I just need to like set up a script called, you know, yolo.sh. And I'll just use it to do maven minus p, native minus d, skip tests, clean package. Um, yeah, that'll, that's surely the plan. I mean, nothing could go wrong with that, right? Actually, I, I, like if you ran a build with uh, no, na no native profile, would it stop the build or would Maven just sort of like shrug it off and just do the equivalent of no profile? Because that would be great. That would mean that it would work for my native stuff. And, uh, and for this one. Okay, almost there. Come on. I wonder if they're able to cache the results from the first run, you know. By the way, that test, Actually, if I'm honest, that test was actually kind of nice because what does our test do? Our test starts up the application context, right? That's it. Um, that's it, they, they start up the application context. So uh, because it starts up the application context, um, we already know that code's gonna work in a native context. We, we saw the result, it was printed out here in the console. Hello, blah, blah, blah. So that's good. When we got at least my uh, anxiety is you know quelled, uh, sated, whatever my, my nervousness because you never know you know it, 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 native images are um, it's a bit of a gamble every little you know 
every first step, every time I wade into a native conversion and into making code work in native, it's like, this could be a long day or it could be really short. You just don't know. You get, you get like bookmark the whole day. And then if it doesn't, if it just takes 20 minutes, great. You've got the whole day to do something else, I guess, you know? Okay, target uh, square. Ta-da. There you go, 74 milliseconds to 73, 73, 73, 73, 75, 72, 73. Yeah, okay, you get it, right? Fast, super fast. And that was based on an interface. Again, can you imagine what, what kind of sorcery has to happen to make this interface turn into an object and have Gravium not uh, puke at the, at the very idea of it? But it does, that's because Spring Native is awesome. Um, so we're gonna, that's one more thing you can do. I will. Uh, hopefully get this turned into hints that live inside of Spring Native so that you'll never even notice it. You'll just go to start.spring.io and um, generate Spring Native and, uh, and then manually add the Spring Cloud square bits and ta-da. Okay, so let's close this. All right, we don't need all that. I love that Spring Cloud. That's a new Spring Cloud square thing. I don't think we've talked about this on this show yet. Um, I certainly haven't. So let's see. In, out, square, sample, goodbye. What's left? So we looked at Spring Integration, we looked at Spring Cloud Square. That's nice for us. Uh. Okay. Okay, so that's good. Okay, what about exposed? Let's do that. So exposed is a ORM for Kotlin. And if I'm honest, uh, this is me like scratching an itch. I wanted to make this work for my own use cases. I'm hoping that the Kotlin exposed uh, project itself accepts the hints. So uh, let's see, JetBrains. Exposed. This is my thing, and this is the other one. So, this is the actual exposed project. Um, and I put in this issue. Nope, it's still not open. Is it merged? Have they done something with it? Nope. Oh, native. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, not a, not a thing is done here, but okay, so I, it's okay, right? We, the, the point is I, um, I built some hints for this uh, for Spring Native. Yeah, and um, this doesn't belong in Spring Native, that's the problem. It, it would belong uh, in the exposed project because we can't maintain every other third party libraries. Um, Bits. So let me see. Jack brains expose ORM. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if I go to the hint, if I let's see, Maven minus D skip tests install. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sublime. The the parent one is just a stub, I think. Yeah, I don't need this. It's got to be a packaging. Um, goody. Mm -hmm. okay. So let's look at the hints first. There's a quite a bit of stuff you have to do to make this work, right? But it's not, once you do it, it works, right? You can see it's, it's not, there's not even, any, it's just all these various types. You just have to make these types work and then you're done. That's it, right? That would be the sum total of what we'd have to contribute to the exposed project. I wish they would respond to my little pull request or my issue from two weeks ago. Okay, but once you've got that on the class path, then uh, you can go to uh, demo idea palm XML. XML. 
And you know, because it's a custom set of hints, it, it doesn't live in Spring Native itself. And because it's not in my code proper, you have to add it to the AOT plugins class path, right? So it's Spring AOT, com just long exposed ORM native hints, right? Just like that. Source, main, Kotlin. Okay, so this is the exposed ORM. It's a Kotlin ORM. It's a way to do type safe queries against the data store uh, in Kotlin in the language. So, you know, nothing too fancy. It's just public static void main. Here's a runner, the bean that gets invoked when the application starts up. With it, I use this customer service instance to query for all the data and then iterate over the results. Uh, the customer service interface just looks like that. The exposed implementation of which looks like this. So it's just, you know, when somebody calls all, I say customers.selectall.map and I map the results into a customer object. So customers is the Kotlin exposed ORM object based on this entity that I've created called customer. So they're not the same thing. Object customers, customer, okay? This is like the hibernate.cfg.xml from, you know, days of yore. It's the mapping between the object world and the types in the uh, in the data store. Okay, so it's a pretty trivial example. Uh, wouldn't it be great if that worked? And yes, it can. So Maven minus p. Actually, what do I have here? Yeah. Well, so I'll just run this. I'll just run build and run. Okay, you can see it does minus p native minus d skip tests clean package and then runs the demo in the in the target directory. So we'll just kick that off, let, us do its, let it do its thing. Although, does this expect a Postgres database, I wonder? Mm. Yeah, it does. I'm gonna need a Postgres database a stat. So let's see here. Um, run. PostgreSQL, cat, good. Oh, you, <laughs> I said, I don't need Docker. I said, it won't be, I just want the RAM back, thanks. I, uh, I even made fun of it. And, uh, and now look at me now, crawling right back. I need Docker. Well, we know who won this one. All right, we'll wait for it to start. This might actually take longer than my native image compilation, which says something because native compilation is not fun. <laughs> Let that do its thing. Okay, nearly there, nearly. Maybe, come on, come on. Two minutes, 22 seconds. No database, right, that's that's okay. But you can see it one and two. So let's, let's see if our Docker daemon's doing the right thing. Come on. Hey, good stuff. There's our Postgres database. So now, target, demo. I have what, oh, nope, 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 JK, JK. Let's see, customers doesn't exist, that's fair. Uh, so we do run Postgres PSQL U B K O H local host B K yeah yeah password guess what it's B K create table customers ID serial primary key name var car two five five not null insert into customers name values spring Fans, okay. So now, 
take three. Et voilà. So there's our data, right? Uh, from using using the exposed ORM with Spring, uh, and, and we're using the Spring Boot starter in exposed, right? They actually have one on their side in the in the exposed project. That's why I'm kind of hoping they'll sprout a hints module as well. Uh, and there you go, 84 milliseconds, but it works. It's talking to a database, uh, doing all the stuff you would expect, uh, and it's nice type safe Kotlin DSL. So right on, good. Okay, so that's another thing that you can do now. Um, what else did we do? Oh, so the last week I went and uh, let me see, what's the to-do list to say? I think it's the OAuth stuff now, right? Yeah, because we did these three already. We did Spring Integration and Spring Cloud Square and Exposed ORM. So this is Kotlin, this is Spring Cloud, this is a Spring Integration thing. Now let's talk about security. Um, I was working with uh, my buddy, Matt Rabel over on the Okta world uh, and um, I wanted to help him, first of all, get a OAuth resource server. So in OAuth, you've got this idea of a, of a client, which is a thing that connects to a, um, a resource, which is an API. And, um, uh, and then that API can be protected by an authorization server. So the, the resource is, is an API that is protected by, it needs, you know, in order to be able to use it, you need to pass in a token, an access token of some sort. You get that access token from the authorization server. Uh, and usually there's a, when you get to get that, usually to get that uh, token, you, you are acting in the context of some user. So you're saying, this is Josh trying to access this API, give him a token because Josh is allowed to access this API. If, however, you operate in kind of a headless fashion where it's like a cron job, there's no user making the request, you're not acting on in the context of or the, on behalf of somebody, then it, we call that just a client credentials only token. So that's basically the arrangement of OAuth, right? You, you have a client, um, it connects to a resource, which is an API that's been protected. It's, there's a filter that rejects requests that don't have valid tokens. There's different ways to get that token, but one is to act as a headless client or and the other is to act on behalf of a user, a human being, uh, you know, a known agent, okay? Um, and so there's two ways to do this. The most generic, most useful way is to use the, uh, uh, just built-in support in Spring Security. Now, Spring Security 5 and later, as of uh, 2017, has OAuth support, right? So, what did I do? Uh, so, uh -huh. So this one, 14 days ago? No, that's, no. Where did I put it? Oh, you know what? Maybe I put it in the spring tips as well. Yeah, probably. Okay, so spring, OAuth resource server. Good, 14 days ago, that's the one that looks right. Okay, desktop, git clone, cd OAuth resource. Nope, wrong one. Service. So, okay, there's a couple of pieces here. First of all, you need an OAuth server. Um, one of these days, when I come back on this show, I'm going to do a look at Spring Projects Experimental, the OAuth server, right? The authorization server, the new one that we're building right here. So, authorization server, right? Oh, by the way, what was that? Yes. So you remember I was talking about how you soon, look at that, five hours ago. This is a different thing. So remember earlier I showed you that the pull request for Spring Cloud Square got accepted? Well, this is the pull request to Spring Native itself for Spring integration. So remember I had to add that generic message um, uh, for the type hint. I had to add this little type hint that made generic message work. Well, now it's in Spring Native itself. So in theory, if you're using the snapshots of Spring Native, then this will just work out of the box. You won't even need to do that. So everything I showed you in the Spring Integration zip example, both of which are re require Spring Integration 5.5 or later, everything I showed you will still work, except you don't need that one line that says type hint generic message because as of five hours ago, that got merged. All right, good stuff. I didn't even know about that one. Um, okay, so anyway, there's an authorization server. One of these days, I'm gonna you know take that for a spin with you uh, on this little show of ours. But for now, 
um, for now, wait, you know, I'm just going to use the uh, key cloak, which is very, very popular, very, very good, very, very ubiquitous. Uh, and I, I found this amazing little recipe on the Bialdun blog, right? Uh, and it's a key cloak embedded in a Spring Boot application, which was in turn inspired by the work by former Spring Data colleague and teammate Thomas Deremont. So, you know, the full circle of life. Anyway, the, um, the whole point is this is a way to run key cloak, which is not a Spring Boot app by default, as a Spring Boot app, right? Um, there's a fair bit of configuration, you know, that I don't purport to claim credit for, right? This is uh, all Bialdung and Thomas Daremont and all that good stuff. So lots of lots of stuff here that I don't I don't know or care about. It's just there's a lot of stuff happening here, right? Okay, so um, anyway, the benefit of this is that you can just run it. So uh, run. I'm just going to do Maven Clean Spring Boot Run. I have no idea if you can do Key Cloak as an author as, as like a native app. Uh, I don't care. It's you know, I'll be I'll be focused much more on the authorization server, the Spring authorization server, which in theory competes with this. Um, okay, go go go. So it looks like it's going to start. This takes a few seconds because there's just Key Cloak is huge. It's a big big piece of software. Awesome piece of software. Don't get me wrong, but uh, big, lots of stuff. Look at that database stuff and stuff just more more and more stuff you know okay all right you done no okay keep it up all right 25 seconds now uh let's go to our demo resource server and open this up okay Alrighty, so uh, this is all you need for a, this is the security application, right? It's just a very simple REST API that requires a token. And now what I'm a little bit worried about is I don't know if I ever figured out how to get that token. Um, let's see, build. Oh, I, in this in this recipe, I'm using the, the build pack support because again, either one's fine. So I'll just do build and run. Um, but it, it does actually make me wonder how, how I'm going to get a token from this thing to show you how it works. I think I can just follow this example in here somewhere. There's users that are configured in this somewhere, right? So auth, username is bile admin and pass. I wonder if that gives me, oh, maybe it's this, baldung baldung, okay. Uh, SSL, ID is name is user. Where's the, is it like, let's just try. I don't know, we'll figure it out here eventually, but. I really should have written this down. It's been a couple of weeks since I had to worry about this. Thanks. So much stuff. Passwords, UMA, uh, John at test, users. Okay, this seems interesting. Password. Hmm. Mike at other.com type is password. I don't know what the password is though, people. This is gonna be a problem. Let's see if there's a password in here. Okay, password. Admin users, admin, admin. So maybe that'll work. Mm. Okay, let's try it. So uh, that we run this, let's just run it first. Let's just do Maven. Actually, I can do it inside of the ID, why not? Key cloak. 
demo resource server. We're doing this on the JVM just so we have some idea of what's going to happen. And then we'll turn it into a native image. And that's just really neat. Um, OK. OK, good. So that's up and running. So now what happens if we go to localhost? Hello, right? I'm going to do hello. There's no name because I'm going to draw the name from the current authenticated principle, right? So localhost, hello, 401. So it's not authorized, right? Ooh, it's a bit of a bummer. Why would that not? Keycloak.host is localhost 8080, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's a bit of a bummer. I don't even know. Test, did I write a test? Of course I didn't. Nope. Oh, see, this is, a, okay, well, that's awkward. No problem. Okay, that works. It's just, I don't have a password to show you because it's, uh, it'll be tedious. So let's see, control C that. Hello. Terminal. We're gonna kick that off though, build and run just for austerity. That's gonna take its time in the background. The other thing I worked on that's related to this, but not exactly this, is the, so um, Okta Spring Boot Starter, okay? So I was working, I did a, a I hung out with a, my buddy Matt Rabel and Brian DeMirrors, this is him right here, um, on a live stream, on the Okta stream, right? Different stream, not this one, this is Tanzu. Uh, and uh, we just, together, we figured out how to rework their Okta auto config a little bit uh, so that it could support Spring Native. So if you look at the changes here, uh, most of it just had to do with switching out um, method invocation for parameter, you know, like, uh, you know, injecting it by type as a parameter. Um, so blah, 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 qualified bean, proxy bean method equals true, right? This kind of stuff, one parent, go to that. Add, oh, this is, I think, fine. When did we do this? Was this like a week ago or two weeks ago? Anyway, um, so what did we do? We did a Spring Octa Spring Boot starter. And then examples, integration tests, OAuth 2. Are there hints in here? No. Where do they add this? Let's see where do they added it. Octa. See, there's an issue in here somewhere. This one. Pond.xml, blah, blah, blah. Spring would start with Spring Security. Okay, well, this is this is what prompted it, right? Because he, he used the Okta Spring Boot, he used the Spring Boot Security Starter uh, for OAuth, right? The resource server that worked in this blog. And that he used uh, Okta instead of Keycloak, but you know, same basic role, you configure both. But then what prompted our hack session was he couldn't get the Spring Boot starter itself to work. And so that was the result of what we did. You know, the result of that was that we, we fixed it uh, live on the stream. I'm just trying to figure out where he would have stashed it. Uh, but anyway, suffice it to say, I think that's ready. That'll be ready soon, if not already. So the Spring, we, we did get it to work. That's my point, right? <laughs> like, let's see, if we go back here, Let's go to Rabel. What is his GitHub user doing right now? Okay. Repositories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Schematics, generator, Octa Spring Boot. Forked, updated five days ago. This seems more promising. Seven commits behind. Okay. 
Is there a branch in there that we need to know about? Coverage, OIDC, Spring, Spring Native, voila. There's that, there you go, seven days ago, change package name. So, you know, I, I think if you look at all this, you'll see that there's actually a working version. Um, sorry, I couldn't demo that. Oh, there you go, Spring Native, adds some annotations, whatever. Okay, there, there's, a, there's all the, uh, the history in there. I, I wish I could give you a better picture because I'm not sure where things landed, but the point is, all of that is going to be in the Octa Spring, Spring Security uh, you know, starter. I want to thank you for your time, people. I appreciate it. I don't know if you have any questions, comments, feedback, but as always, I'm at your service on the internet, josh at joshpong.com or Starbucks man on Twitter. Reach out, hit me up. Look forward to talking to you again next time and have a great week and weekend.